world-renowned Dallas pastor T.D. Jakes is named in a federal lawsuit against musician Sean Diddy Combs. It's followed by a producer that worked with Combs. It discusses how the singer planned to leverage his relationship with the bishop to soften the impact on his public image of Casey Ventura's lawsuit. Ventura is a former girlfriend of Combs who filed her own lawsuit in November alleging abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Meanwhile, Combs' lawyer is criticizing the raids at two of the hip-hop moguls' homes in a federal sex trafficking investigation. He called them an unprecedented ambush. It comes as we're getting a new look inside Combs' L.A. house after the search by federal agents. Carter Evans has details about what the feds have uncovered so far. Go this is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be typing Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, Brother Love, whatever you want to call him. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what we get Puff Daddy as. Um, he's been, it's a trail of shit that's always followed this guy from Big E to the Tupac to, to you know, the Shine uh, incident to the sex allegation to the Diddy parties to sleeping with boys, Usher, Justin Bieber, I don't know, all that stuff might come out in the future. Um, just be aware of it. Um, I don't know what the fuck they're doing over there in the hip hop community, but uh, man, they need to get that shit to fucking gather. But uh, we're going to be using Linda Barron's interaction styles um, and temperament combined with cognitive functions. We do have a video of us breaking down all the interaction styles and cognitive functions. Um, we will drop a link to that so you can watch that. And even if you're blind, deaf, and dumb, you'll be able to use the interaction styles to help you find someone's personality type, your family, whatever it is. So first thing we do is we go check personality dummy base um, to see what they got him as. Okay, um, the dummy base over here, the monkeys, um, they have uh, P. Diddy as an ESTP. So let's check the chart here. We get in that. So ESTPs, that's... I think we typed Dwayne Johnson in ESTP. We typed Joe Rogan in ESTP. Um, but ESTPs are direct, outcome focused, the TIFE, um, the SENI, the interest, um, pragmatic, concrete. Um, so if he meets those metrics, we'll go ahead and call him um, an ESTP. If not, we'll figure out what his actual personality type is. And uh, so. Like I said, we have all these metrics here. Once we get enough of them, we'll start knocking them down. Um, and um, guys, we're still doing the free typing sessions by us. We actually take our time and we do actually care about getting your personality type right. Um, all we ask is that you subscribe to the channel and you join our Discord or our Facebook group. The Discord is really like popping off. I'm really proud of the mods over there. Chai, um, Avery, um, Leslie, um, Dion. Uh, uh, Mod, uh, Medina, um, all those guys over there doing a, a fucking awesome job over there. The Discord is fucking popping and I love it. Um, just sometimes I can't be in Discord too long because an hour in Discord is like four hours in real life and then all of a sudden I got an unproduct unproductive day and that kind of sucks sometimes. But I do love talking to you guys. I think I played Uno with you guys um, this weekend, last weekend. It was fun. Battleship got my ass beat. Um, so it's fun but let's get into this okay and um, comment a celebrity you guys want typed we do have quite a list to do because I've kind of been slacking and I will be starting to work on my comprehensive breakdown of all of the personality types one by one um, the thing about that is I, I want to do it right so that the videos are age they, they want the age so um, you know I have to go through the cognitive functions I have to go through the holistic view of the type. I have to go through the subsets um, because I'm really seeing these Dario Nardi subsets coming out a lot. Um, so we have to go into that because let's just say, for instance, if you're looking at an ENTP, um, you need to be able to understand that there's different types of ENTPs out there. Like the creative would be um, Kanye West. The dominant would be Andrew Tate. Um, normalizing would be somebody like Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, harmonizing, I haven't really found yet. But we're still working on that. But uh, just that shows you a lot of where that type's going or what how they're thinking. Um, if you just think, oh, I got an ENTP, and then you run into someone like my brother who's a dominant ENTP, and you think he's going to act like Leonardo DiCaprio, you got, like, fucked up. Um, but let's get into this. 
what proceeded to transpire. Oh. Okay, Biggie, myself, we decided to go out to LA because we had, we shot the video out there. It was just better production value out of Los Angeles, the place where they make movies. Better production, okay, so he's talking about TE there, okay, and he's also talking about the interest. TEFI production. Everything. So we decided to go out there and shoot the video. And while he was out there, he wanted to also do as much damage control as he could do as far as what was done to him, to himself and his career as far as him so-called being involved in this East Coast, West Coast rivalry. So he wanted to go out there and make sure that the fans heard him say it. So he was doing radio interviews and um, press interviews. And also, he was doing rehearsal for spring break, and uh, so he's here. He's talking about what Biggie's doing, okay? When he's recanting the story, I know this primarily might be about Biggie in general, um, so I'm gonna be hesitant to like, throw that down as SE. But generally speaking, I would throw that on the SE. But this is probably after the you know Biggie murder, so I'll be chill on that. Um, doing shooting his video, and. That's all he was doing, and he decided also Soul Train Music Awards being presented there with myself. And we decided to go out to the party because we felt it was a private party. It wasn't like we were trying to be out and being seen all over the place. We were trying to go out and um, go there because it was a private party. So the night of the party, we went there, and we basically sat at a table all night, and a lot of people were coming and giving us positive greetings and everybody talking about what people were doing, people were coming in and giving us positive greetings. Um, see, he, he's primarily an SE user here. Yeah, because it was a private party. So the night of the party, we went there and we basically sat at a table all night and a lot of people were coming and giving us what people are doing, positive greetings and everybody at the party was just having a good time and dancing. Everybody at the party was having a good time. It's more SE. Dancing. And we were sitting there just talking and, and, all night. Just remember, like, you don't have to, like, try to be like that guy who's like, oh, this is SE S parent or this is SI inferior or whatever the fuck that is. You, you just be like, okay, that's SE and I, okay? And just eliminate from there to get down to the person's type. You don't need to be like, oh, that's SE critic or whatever, man. Fuck that and just listening to everybody else's music and listening to our own records and feeling a sense of proudness hearing hearing a record and just seeing all the people dance to your music seeing all the people dance this guy's s-e-s-e-s-e -E -S -E -S -E. that's why we got into this and so as time progressed the part time progressed so we got progression okay or process or movement whatever you want to call it um as you know linda has changed it from movement to process, I guess she feels as though that's a better word um, than movement, but whatever. But you see how he's going on this story. There's a lot of SE. And just seeing all the people dance. Seeing all the people dancing. To your music, because that's why we got into this. And that's why we got into this. T-E-F-I, S-E-N-I, impact. And so as time progressed, the party had got too crowded. Time progressed. And the fire marshals had um, shut the party down. And so Biggie had a broken leg at the time, so it took us a while to get out. So we finally walked out because he was just walking with a cane. Yeah. And see, we see, got out, so we see stood out. See how the stories is all just like what other people are doing. Motherfucker ain't talked about what he was doing at fucking all. Like side for like five minutes and we just talk and the reason why people uh say like se is about what other people are doing is because se is consistently constantly scanning the environment okay um the better the person's se the more they pick up on individual things somebody like me who has fucking weak se sometimes my brother kyle christian be like bro you missing so much shit around you because i'm a little bit more focused um, so I miss a lot of like SE things that's going around, but I still pick up on things. A little bit, just about regular things that we talk about. Nothing really. With Billy. He talked about his album a little bit, and just talked to me. We were just talking about things that two guys talk about. You know what I'm saying? About the party girls, whatever. And then we got into the cars. We just said it's time to leave, and my car was in front. Mm -hmm. Biggie was in the middle, and then another security vehicle was. Um, behind, which had the off-duty officers in. 
and um, we left out of the out of the driveway of the parking lot, and we made a right. And um, as we made the right, we were just driving, and the vehicles were one behind each other. And um, I was looking straight ahead, basically, and um, I just heard shots ring out. And when the shots rang out, I had immediately did the human reaction. I had just ducked down, and everybody in the car ducked down. And then um, our car was still, you know, had like sped off. And then um, I heard somebody say Vicky's car had got shot at. And so, like, while my car was moving, I had just opened the door, and the, the driver, he stopped, and I had jumped out, and I had ran to the car, and I had immediately did that because I knew his leg was broke, so I knew there's no way he could have made it out of the car. And then when I went there to the car, I opened up the door, and he was... <sighs> opened up the door, and he was hunched over, and, and I was trying to talk to him and trying to move him over, and I was trying to tell somebody to call 911, but I just told... I was like, by the time they get, I didn't know what was going on because he wasn't talking back to me. So I just told one of the drivers of security to, to just jump in the car, just take me to the nearest. Um, you see that? You see how his SE went in there? His SE knows what to do in the uh, heat of the moment, okay? You see how he discerned that very quickly? Uh, people with low SE going to have a trouble there, okay? Um, I'll never forget the fucking time. One of my coworkers, and I was in charge at work, and one of my coworkers was going to labor, and I was just like, my brain starts shitting itself. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Thank God my friend Luke came up. Thank God. He's uh, he's an ENTP. He looks like Ashton Kutcher. Um, good thing he fucking came up because I was just like, oh, shit, I don't know what the fuck to do. I, I ain't never been in this situation. But people who have high SE very, very well will know what to do. In those situations, they're actually programmed to be like that. Um, that's how Dario Nardo talks about the tennis op. Like they're just ready to, to react to stimuli. Um, hospital, please. And we were rushing to the hospital. You see how, like, there were other cars that, that were with quickly. us and other people that were just drivers of security to, to just jump in a car, just take me to the nearest um, hospital, please. And we were rushing to the hospital. And there were other cars that were with us and other people that were just following us. And as we got there, everybody helped him out of the car. And I was just, as we were driving, I was talking to him, but I wasn't hearing anything. He wasn't saying anything. And and I was just getting scared, you know, because I was just like, I didn't know. All right, so we, this video is all about this. Um, so what I will say about this, Puffy, you have to be one of the stupidest motherfuckers to think you could go into another person's territory um, and think that people forget anything. People don't forget fucking shit like that okay people blame you guys for killing tupac okay you think you can just go in there i'm going going back back to cali cali okay you find yourself dead stupid shit like and i i'm pretty sure they paid some guy named poochie or something like that I want to say the guy's name was fucking Poochie or whatever the fuck his name was. Hey, what um, up, y'all? It's DJ NV now. And, and the crazy thing, this is why I always say this, like, people's life isn't as valuable as they believe it is to be. Because I want to say they pay Poochie $10,000 and he paid, Suge Knight paid Poochie $10,000 and he paid um, his baby mama $10,000 to, to kind of fund the whole thing. Um, if you look up the Greg Kading incident on YouTube, um, he talks about, like, you know, Tupac killer and um, Biggie's killer. So, it's made music, that. man, for thirty years. Thirty years. Thirty years. Bad so boy. It's like, mm. I feel it's just a, just very blessed and filled with the spirit. So, good morning to all. God bless your morning. Yeah. Well, congratulations how, how, again. Yeah, we how, see did, that. how does that feel? Thirty years of bad boy, ten years of revolt, fifty years of hip hop. How does that feel to Sean Combs, somebody who's been mm. so instrumental in the culture? Oh man, it's, it's 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 humbling and it's really like surreal in a sense, you know what I'm saying? To really be, cause I, I remember doing interviews with you guys, just like even, you know, just from the beginning mm -hmm. and 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 just just how I've grown up in in the industry, it's like really surreal just knowing that I started out as a kid from Harlem mm -hmm. and just you know made it all the way to this point and have been able to have a positive impact and been able to really witness positive impact and see some more this it and be a part of the culture and just loving to be putting out music mm -hmm. at this point from the love of it you know what i'm saying and it's for the love of it fi 
it's dope, man. It's it's really really dope. The you one see? thing I don't like because you know they say thirty years a, a, a bad boy, especially when I hear this album. You got to put the Uptown in there too. So yeah. with Uptown, how long is it for you? Yeah, it'd probably be that would have probably been maybe forty. Nah, 35? not forty. Like um thirty. Four years, 34? 34 mm. years, yeah. yeah. So like, it's a blessing to be able to do anything that you love to do, you know what I'm saying? And, and to now be doing it, I feel like I'm even better. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm even better. I was talking to LeBron one day at the Drake concert. And I was like, you, you can name drop LeBron, name drop Drake. Come on, TFI. Stronger. You're getting better, aren't you? He's like, yeah, I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. Like You really can get better. I think we have this misconception about longevity. You know what I'm saying? When longevity is one of the greatest blessings in the world. So Absolutely. I'm living out my dream, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Beyond, you know, beyond even what- Living what, out my dream in I uh... What I could have even imagined, because I don't, I don't know a lot of cats that have, you know, could say 34 years of doing something they love and mm -hmm. now still getting stronger as far as like their, their splat that they put out in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Cause you, a... you ain't getting no stronger now, progression, okay? Still getting stronger, still, still maintaining movement. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and start knocking some of these off. We have enough for a TEFI, okay, and uh, SENI. So with that being said, if you're a TEFI and um, SENI, that either makes you an SFP or NTJ. Um, they're automatically pragmatic, okay? So just go ahead and knock that one off as well. Eliminate down to what you get to. Okay, this guy's coming off informative. And he's definitely progression. Um, but the thing is, is when you got an informative and uh, SENI in initiating or progression, you automatically land at ESFP because they're the only SE user in all of the starters. Um, ESFJ is SI user. Um, ENTP is SI user. Uh, ENFP is SI user. So when you get an SE user that's a starter, that's automatically ESFP. I mean, I could have made this fucking quick as fuck. Surprise you when, when you see, like, see kids. Like, the other day I'm watching you on at the VMAs, right? And you're going through uh, uh, hits that you have that I know because I grew up on. But my son doesn't know Diddy for those hits. So he's like, oh, I didn't know. Oh, that's, oh, because they hear the old samples. Did that ever surprise you that a lot of these kids don't know you for music? They know you for other things, your business, your whether it's the liquor or they might have seen you on TikTok with Khaled or they see you from something else. Does that ever say, damn, that's strange because of such a, a, a hold that you had on music for so long? I'm, I'm not. I think that, you know, I've gone in other areas and I also went away from music for a while, but I've gone in other areas and have success. Life has taken a different journey. So they know me for a different... Talking about the journey there. Life is going on a different journey. So that's movement, progression, process, whatever you want to call it things you know mm -hmm. and um but but to see you know um music you know my music having a, a renaissance in the sense of everybody sampling it mm -hmm. everybody on the wave and being able to be an artist that that's most everybody sampling it fc got generational as far as impact and being able to really rock a crowd impact rock and cloud fc fc multi-generationally and and when you talk about relevant tefi you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they know me for different things, but to now be able to introduce them to my music part is also a beautiful thing because they know me as being an entrepreneur. They know me going into an industry, taking this over. They know me for something that, you know, if they really want to take some positivity out of it, they'll be able to take something out of it. But now when they see me and I'm doing my musical bag, then they see, oh, that's that superhero. That's something mm -hmm. different. That's, you know, that that's one thing I love about it. Um, you know, love about them. And so I, I think it's really dope to really, when I get introduced to like a younger generation without trying to actually play to a younger generation right. just by being me. I mean, what the fuck is he saying here? Okay. I mean, my God, man. My God. He's feeling himself right now. Informative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. I fuck with the album. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I fuck with that. Thank you very much. It's very, very, yeah. very, very proper. I was telling them that Thank uh, you. before they walked in. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if I should tell them that or not. No, no, no. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he thought you were going to say that. He was like, I'm like, but I don't know if I'm going to tell I'm like, well, I don't know. I, what is that? Hey, yo, we are, we are in the love era, everybody. Everyone, I have an announcement. But, but he felt all... that, though, because he saw me. He was like, yo, you yeah. acting funny, yo. <laughs> 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 
Nah, because you me and this brother, like, we know each other. If I'm uh, like, I mean, I'm not going to be honest. I'm exposed. If, if I'm in trouble, I'm calling him for, like, strategic advice, mm. and we talk at a whole, at a whole nother level. Mm. So when I come in, I'm like, yo. Talking about using somebody else for the thinking T. Damn, you really got your game face on. Man. <laughs> it's feeling like it's feeling like you know what I'm saying, like like Magic yeah. and Isaiah, whoever was cool and it's like, yo, bro. GE comparison, Magic Isaiah. Nah, we not it's going game time, there. Right? He's like, nah, nigga. Mm -mm, nope, nope. And then, he, and then he was like, mm, I like that album. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, so, so, but I'm telling y'all, it is all right to love. Absolutely. Paul. Absolutely. It is all right. It's not a, I know there's been it different. It is all right to love Puff. Okay. Give me the FI. Stories hmm. and the, the, the mythology has gone all over the world. But um, you know what I'm saying? I'm love, man. And what, that's it. what made you jump back into music? With with everything, you know, amazing from revolt to, to the liquor to everything. What, what says mm. I want to get back on the road, back to touring, yes. back to making music and see it, it's a different time. Now it's you know, it's it's streaming, it's things outside of people actually going to the store and buying it. You yeah. know, it's playlists, it's things that we can't control, which you could have controlled before. What put you back into that mind frame? Um, the thing that got me into it, which was the love, when I when I started making music, I didn't make music, okay, like this is a hustle to make money. I did I did what I felt, I, you know, and I, I, I did like just what I loved. I say to people now, it's not about streams for me. I don't want streams. I want souls. I want to give you that feeling mm -hmm. that's <laughs> missing. There is a feeling missing. We mm -hmm. are in a dark frequency. I, I, I'm blessed to be able to purposely, I try to push my life up into a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. I could walk in a room and let us all be down or I could I could push us up, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever it is. Or the if, frequency generally, generally goes to abstract there, okay? Um, if you want to frown at me, I could give you a smile and a hug, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you know, to to to, to be able to have the power that your music, all of my records, like, kind of make you feel good. People say, like, when I see your records, it makes me want to do the dance with my shoulders, mm -hmm. but it makes you smile, too, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And that, that right there was the purpose. And so for me, returning back to music was more... A so much talking. So much talking just to get that out self-love decision you get it to a point in your life where where um you have to decide like okay what what do i want to do that makes me happy mm -hmm. and what really makes me happy is my art making music so i don't i didn't get back you know even though um um you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm returning to music after a long time i didn't come back just like i didn't come into music following the rules i don't follow the rules that's out here set for me now i don't follow the rules pragmatic yeah. And I don't have those rules affect my intention. So my intention with this album ain't to get hot, not to be, you know, um, it, it is to be the best. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. It is to be. I'm tr putting out be the best T -E -F -I. the best music that I can. It's one of my, my, my best bodies of work as far as like R&B. And I wanted to put out that R&B that you could dance to. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't care if there wasn't R&B you couldn't dance to. I wanted to do what I do when I like to celebrate. I like to turn up a little bit, but sometimes it just like it get a little it get a little toxic for my frequency. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Not knocking it. So I was like, I'm not. I don't. You don't complain about nothing. You go no, and if you have this is over, man. This is over. He's informative. <clears throat> All right, Puffy. Puff Daddy, he's informed with, like, come on. Um, uh, so, he's ESFP. Sorry, guys. All you ESFPs out there, y'all got y'all got Puff Daddy. Um, for him, I think Puff Daddy is a 3W2, okay? He's the, I'm going to say Puff Daddy is the typical three that everybody thinks about, the social three. Okay, so um, we gonna hit him with three W two um, S O um, slash um, S. Mm, I mean, second one really doesn't matter. Doesn't seem sure. I'm gonna go S P. Fuck it. Um, so we got E S F P three W two S O S P, and for the Dario Nardi. Um, 
thing. I'm 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 gonna give Puff Daddy a dominant. Okay, he's a dominant ESFP. Okay, um, dominant ESFP three W two S O S P ranking wise. I'm gonna give him prodigy level. Obviously, this guy's a beast. I ain't gonna lie. From the hood, he's able to accomplish what he's done. Even though he he might be a piece of shit. He might be a piece of shit. I don't know. The jury's still out on him. But uh, ESFPs are initiating. Okay, he was initiating. I um, mean, in the conversation, very concrete. The only thing he did mention um, that was abstract was the frequency thing. Okay, but that was more up to just bluff his ass up to make him feel good about himself. Um, his interest or motive, um, what he gets out of a situation. Okay, because that's pragmatic and interest. Um, those two together are going to be like, what can I get out of the situation today or tomorrow, not in the future or anything? Like, he's not thinking future on that. Um, so, pragmatic, informative, progression, um, S E N I N T E F I. And uh, comment below what you guys thought Puff Daddy's um, personality type was. The personality dummy base got it wrong, they got him as an ESTP. Um, I guess anybody who they believe is dominant, they're going to call ESTP. Um, I always find it funny. They, they've started a personality database for myself, and they got me as an ESTJ. It's fucking hilarious. But well, this is Mongolian Mindset, and we are out.